Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I begin, and this is not directly with you, actually, I just wanted to straighten something out. I know my colleagues, the gentlemen and the gentle ladies from Georgia, Washington, California, uh, Pennsylvania, they all mentioned Project 2025. Well, I don't know how they expect you to know about that, number one. Uh, I'm pretty damn involved. I don't really know a whole lot about it. But President Trump has made it clear, and we're going to say it again, we'll say it over and over again, that there are some things he disagreed with, some things he agreed with that he wasn't that familiar with. It was from the Heritage Foundation. And that was just raw politics, to be honest with you. It was just because 2025 has some things in it that they believe are really going to offend American people, and it very well may. And so they want to pin it on the presidential candidate. He didn't author it. He didn't condone it. He didn't put his seal of approval on it. It's getting old. It really is. We do this with other things. Just like in this committee, when anything goes wrong, anything, somehow Donald Trump's name has to be brought into it, and it gets tiring. It's politics over reality. Second thing about picking the site, I was intimately involved in the Wildwood rally, the biggest rally President Trump's ever had, biggest political rally in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I had spoken to the president about it, and he wanted to do it on the beach because we had over 100,000 people. And let me tell you, we had everybody out there because they were concerned, the Secret Service and the local police and the, the county police and just about every entity could be. And so they had, behind it was that iconic setting. They had the Ferris wheels on the pier and all the stuff. They had agents up in there. They had agents in the ocean, in the water, in boats. They had people coordinating, working with each other and talking with each other because they knew it was a risk. So we chose a site that was difficult. The president did, and I thought it was a great site. But nevertheless, we, the law enforcement responded properly. Something went wrong here. You can't blame this on Donald Trump as well. The site was chosen. It's the responsibility of those who serve in law enforcement to make sure that he was safe, period. And I'm sure you'll find out why. Um, on another tangent here, you know, I, I've got to wonder how many qualified people were passed in order for Director Cheadle to get her 30% quota. That's a lousy way to run an agency, especially when it's dealing with law enforcement, to say we've got to have 30% of anything. And I worry about these practices because it's policy over protection. And Director Ray, um, I know that some things were left to you. I understand that. But one of your early acts on the Biden presidency was hiring the FBI's very first chief diversity officer. And since that time, and even before your time, but and you're going to disagree with me, but respectfully, I'm going to disagree with you. Recruitment standards under your lead has resulted in deterioration in many areas, including physical fitness, illicit drug use, financial irregularities, mental health issues, full-time work experience, and integrity. Uh, and I know you dismissed them, but in October 2023, they are a prestigious group of retired FBI special agents and analysts both expressed concern regarding the FBI's willingness to recruit agents that, quote, I'm not saying this, they said it, not me, can't even pass the new relaxed standards for fitness, who are illiterate in some cases and need lessons, educational lessons, don't want to work weekends or after hours, their words, and have serious disabilities or mental health issues, which is not the place for them. Most of your agents are great people. I love them. I love them for what they do. I'm not criticizing most. But these new standards, don't you think this is a hindrance and reduces the morale of the vast majority of good people that you have in the FBI? And I ask you for a quick answer because I have a few other things. So I... I respect our retired agents. Many of them come to our graduations now. Um, and I can tell you emphatically that they are mistaken. Those who think that we have lowered our standards, whether it's on physical fitness or anything else, are mistaken. And you can prove that. Uh, the facts so back me up on the, that. The standards are the same today as they were a decade ago. I'll give I you mean, a, they've changed in well, some in ways fact, that are appropriate. In fact, the physical fitness standards, depends on how far back you go, but the physical fitness standards that our current graduates have to have to graduate from Quantico actually exceed some of the physical fitness standards that were in place if you go back far enough with some of our retirees. But what I would tell you, I think part of the reason there's confusion, and again, I, I accept that these folks are raising their concerns in good faith, 
but we have actually access to the facts. And part of the reason I think there's confusion, just take the physical fitness thing as an example, is that before you had to pass the, the physical fitness test before you showed up to Quantico. Now you have to pass it in order to get a badge at Quantico. The standard hasn't changed. You still have to pass the same test, the same 12 point standard, et cetera. All that stuff applies. The only difference is you can pass it while you're at Quantico. But if you don't pass that same test that's been in place for a long time now, you don't get a badge. And we will dismiss people from Quantico, and we do. And who don't Director, pass that I know test. I have to wrap this up, and I appreciate that. If you could get us information that substantiates what you say, that should be easy enough to do to the whole committee. I'd appreciate it. You know, feelings in this administration are more important than functionality. It's resulted in a border crisis. We don't have time to talk about that. You've spoken out about it. I appreciate that you've spoken out about it. And I think it's also resulted in shortages in our nation's law enforcement and our military. And I think it makes us less safe. So I look forward to seeing those statistics and that proof because I have people talking to my ear that told me otherwise, and I yield back.